If you were a Viking, it was it was a way to become a nobleman, not dirty pirate, savage, not at all. Yes, in that time, but we were all barbaric in that time, unless you were a monk, of course. Welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, hello, and welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast. We are in the midst of recording a series about Scotland for season one, and this series is really going to share Scotland through the voice and the mind of a Scotsman named James, and I'm your host, Laura. So today's episode, I think, is really interesting, and it's all about Vikings and a big part about how Vikings are perceived through today's filter and history of, you know, modern history and our comforts. So what you're going to hear is a field recording explaining about the confusion between the word Viking and the difference between going Viking as opposed to being a Viking and also about how back historically being a Viking was an honor. It was a prestigious honor that was a way to become a nobleman where you're an adventurer by the sea. It was not a a dirty pirate or a savage as maybe some people, we like to put that label and that filter through our modern history. Instead, the Norse Vikings, the Vikings from Norway in particular, were in many cases viewed as some of the least aggressive raiders from all the countries that came in and raided the European coastline during this time. So one very cool fact that I like about this episode is where it was recorded. So you're going to hear a field recording that was recorded live while walking in the midst of a very significant place in Viking history called Lindisfarne. Now, Lindisfarne is in the UK, so it's in the United Kingdom, in the Northumberland region. And Lindisfarne is significant in Viking history because it is the very first known landing point and the attack point for Norse Vikings within Europe. So if any of you out there are familiar with the Vikings TV series that's on Netflix that was created by the History Channel, this is honestly literally the place the real place in the world where in the Viking history point in time, they show in season one where Ragnar and crew land in, in Europe and meet Athelstein for the first time. So anyways, here's James to share with you a bit about the Norse Vikings while walking through Lindisfarne. Enjoy. So you were telling a story earlier about how Viking is not being a Viking, it's going right. Viking. Yeah, so, so there's, there's very, very confused information about the word Viking or Vik. When we, when we sort of look at that, it would tend, tend to suggest that this, the start of it, if you were a man from Vik, which was a South Bay in Norway, uh, you, were, you, you, you could choose to be a Viking or Viking, which meant you would go raiding. Raiding, adventuring by the sea. The more you look at it, the more you can liken it to any uh, navy. So if it, it, it would be like a proud thing in my village. I'm a Viking. Ah. I, I, I go, I, I'm like an explorer. I am, I am a man of the sea, an adventurer. That's Do, not the way history no, remembers no, them, like, though, right? it, like Like British gentlemen were, naval officer. At some, we have lords, noblemen in this country. At some point in time, somebody had to earn that. Today they're just born with these titles. Somebody had to earn that. And in order to earn that, you would be a captain in the Navy and you found a new country, you you murdered all the natives, you were successful in bringing back the gold, you were knighted, you were now a sir. The British Navy had done exactly what the the Norsemen and Vikings did a thousand years later. They went around the whole world, pillaged it, murdered people, burnt down towns and cities, and they came home and they were written in the history books as heroes. There was not much, if you were a Viking, it was it was a way to become a nobleman, not dirty pirate, savage, not at all. 
yes in that time but we were all barbaric in that time unless you were a monk of course and there's been much much writings from around Eastern Europe especially areas like Francia that state from the kings that they would prefer to be raided by the Vikings and their neighbours because the Vikings didn't destroy they didn't, they, they didn't burn down the orchards or the vineyards didn't destroy the homes and after Lindisfarne the Vikings realised as well that the Eastern Europeans would yield all they had to do was frighten them they weren't going to fight back anyway so they would generally it was just smash and grab boom and grab all the gold grab all the good stuff on the boat and off we go again and uh, for many of the Euro European raiders at that point in time they were a lot more aggressive a lot more aggressive than, than the Vikings mm. so the Vikings just seem to be the more famous in history for well, them, right? Well, that's saying it, it, it became a very fa it became quite fashionable in, in the 1800s. It was like oh, this romantic this way of Vikings. So people began to to romanticise about it, um, and I think also as well there was a, there was a sort of sense of 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 mystique in this bloodthirsty society, which was never really. They, were, they, weren't as, they weren't any more... If we took any other society off that time and had a look at them, they would have been just as bloodthirsty. But we tried, we tried, to, we tried to think of the Vikings in our time. And right. That's not possible. We have to think of ourselves in that time and the Vikings at that time. We would have been barbaric. <laughs> 